Hello everyone. Today I'm tackling a topic that's got everyone talking. Can everyone get their hands on pie? Who's going to end up with a mountain of pie? It's a question that even pie's biggest fans and harshest critics can't stop debating. And it's not just about understanding pie. It's about whether anyone's ready to spend their hard-earned cash on it. Now, I won't throw a bunch of jargon at you. We're keeping it simple. Before we dive into the content, please show us some love by giving this video a thumbs up. Your likes signal to the YouTube algorithm how important this video is, helping us reach more pioneers like you. Don't forget to drop a comment with Pi to the Moon to join the conversation. If you're new to our channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update on our latest videos. I warmly welcome you to the Fortune TV show YouTube channel. Pi Network is all about the supply and demand of Pi, especially after they launched the open mainnet. But today, we're focusing on just one piece of the puzzle. Can you envision Pi Network's vibrant future? Picture this. For Pi to thrive, it relies on active trading. But what if Pi were not tradable on exchanges? Could Pi risk stagnation without these exchanges? So, here's the question. Do we need Pi to be tradable on exchanges? Are you one of those individuals ready to step up and breathe life into the Pi market through increased trading activity? Share your thoughts and ideas on how this vital element can contribute to Pi's success. Think about it like this. When you've got something everyone wants, but not enough to go around, the value shoots up. It's like having three candy bars, but 10 friends want them. Those candy bars become pure gold. And when you're down to just one candy bar and the demand's still high, that's when things get crazy. That last candy bar becomes a treasure. Now, let's get real. Take Bitcoin, for instance. It started with just a few enthusiasts minting it, and now it's worth thousands of dollars per coin. That's the power of supply and demand in action. Now let's start with a fundamental economic principle. When demand exceeds supply, the value of a commodity rises. Think of it like this easy example again. If you have three oranges but ten people want to buy them, the scarcity of oranges makes their price go up. And when you're down to your last orange and people are still eager to buy, the price skyrockets because oranges have become increasingly rare. So how does this apply to Pi Network? Well, we're going to explore two groups of Pi owners and see how they affect the market. Group 1 are Pi holders with a substantial stash in their wallet. They are long-term Pi Network miners. These folks have been mining Pi for quite a while. Their commitment to the Pi Network is unwavering as they've stuck around through thick and thin. They believe in Pi's future so they don't rush to spend all their Pi coins easily. Instead, they choose to lock some of it in the mechanism. On the other hand, we have the recruitment champions, those who referred so many people to join Pi Network. They are heavy recruiters. They're strong believers in Pi's potential, and they know not to spend all their Pi. They too opt for the locking mechanism. Some might even keep a significant Pi reserve for future use. Their actions help drive Pi Network's growth. These Pi holders, with a substantial amount of P, often prefer to lock their P for one to three years, with a minimum lockup of 50%. They retain a portion for immediate spending. And now we have Group 2. They hold X Pi coins. Also, they are long-term miners, but with few Pi coins. Similar to the first group, these individuals have been part of Pi for a while. However, they might not have as much Pi as others. To catch up, they need to lock their Pi for a more extended period, typically one to three years, with at least 50% of their Pi. The small Pi owners, this subgroup either doesn't lock their Pi or locks only a tiny portion, less than 25%, and they choose a shorter lock time. They might not be deeply involved in the Pi community and participate mainly for financial gain, without a comprehensive understanding of cryptocurrencies or the Pi network. Now, if we break down the percentages, approximately 25% of individuals in each group lock up over 50% of their Pi for one to three years. This means that around 75% of the total Pi supply is locked up in the early stages. 
Consequently, the pie available for circulation on the market is relatively low, which contributes to its scarcity. However, this doesn't prevent some individuals from selling their pie. There will always be those who don't fully grasp pie's value or are compelled to sell due to unforeseen circumstances. The locking mechanism plays a crucial role. It maintains a low initial circulating supply, which enhances scarcity. This, in turn, reduces the likelihood of everyone rushing to sell their pie at once. Furthermore, it ensures there are buyers in the market, essential for creating a thriving and active pie marketplace. Can you envision Pie Network's vibrant future? Picture this. For pie to thrive, it relies on active trading. But what if pie were not tradable on exchanges? Could pie risk stagnation without these exchanges? So here's the question. Do we need pie to be tradable on exchanges? Are you one of those individuals ready to step up and breathe life into the pie market through increased trading activity? Share your thoughts and ideas on how this vital element can contribute to Pi's success. Wow! I have been mining Pi, so I just had to dive into this fascinating breakdown of Pi Network's supply and demand dynamics. First off, kudos to the Pi Core team for laying out these critical insights in such a comprehensive manner. Let's break it down. We started by explaining a fundamental economic principle that anyone who's ventured into the world of cryptocurrencies should understand. Supply and demand. Comparing it to the example of oranges is brilliant because it simplifies the concept and relates it to the Pi network. Now, let's get into these two primary groups of Pi holders. Group 1. Pi holders with a substantial stash. The long-term miners. These are the early adopters, the true believers in Pi network's vision. They've been mining for a while, which not only shows their dedication, but also hints at their strong belief in Pi's potential. The fact that they opt for locking some of their Pi instead of spending it all is a testament to their commitment. The recruitment champions. These individuals are the lifeblood of Pi Network's growth. They've recruited many others, which means they have a deep understanding of Pi's potential. They understand the value of holding onto their Pi for the long term which is why they too choose the locking mechanism. It's noteworthy that these pie holders usually opt to lock their pie for one to three years, with at least 50% locked. This strategic approach not only ensures they have pie for future use, but also supports a stable pie ecosystem. Group 2. The XP owners, the long-term miners with few pie. These pie holders might not have accumulated a massive stash, but their long-term commitment is evident. They understand the importance of catching up with the early miners and lock up at least 50% of their pie for one to three years. The small pie owners. This subgroup, though holding a smaller amount of pie, plays an essential role in the pie network ecosystem. While some may not lock their pie, those who do often choose shorter lock times. They might not be as deeply involved, but they are part of the network's diverse fabric. Here's where it gets fascinating. When we do the math, roughly a quarter of individuals in each group are locking up more than 50% of their pie for one to three years. This essentially means that a significant chunk, around 75% of the total pie supply is locked up in the early stages. That's a compelling statistic. Now the critical question is, why does this matter? It all boils down to scarcity, my friends. The pie that's readily available for trading on the market remains relatively low. This naturally drives up demand and prices. It's an excellent strategy for maintaining value and preventing massive sell-offs. Of course, as the video rightly points out, this doesn't mean that nobody will ever sell their pie. There will always be those who may not fully grasp Pi's potential or are in situations that necessitate selling. However, the locking mechanism plays a pivotal role in shaping the market dynamics. This video provides a comprehensive look at Pi Network's supply and demand strategy, emphasizing the significance of the locking mechanism. It's a brilliant approach that maintains scarcity, keeps the market dynamic, and ensures there are buyers. All Vidal components of Pi Network's future success. Remember, 
As we navigate the world of cryptocurrencies, understanding these intricacies is key. It's all about striking the right balance between supply and demand, and Pi Network seems to be onto something promising here. Thank you all for joining us on this insightful journey. Until next time, this is Dr. Nicholas signing off. Goodbye, and see you in our upcoming videos. No.